people don't like to mess around with the IRS and the, the governments, you know, nobody wants that notice that says, oh my God, I owe $40,000. We recently caught up with Navy veteran Andrea Gepner. She is the owner and founder of Accountable CFO. Starting off part-time helping a small business owner with their financials, she's been able to scale her business, live life on her own terms, and leave corporate America. Stay tuned as she's going to share more in this episode of VetBiz TV. Well, thanks for hopping on with us today, Andrea. My pleasure. It's so good to be here. Thank you, Brian, for inviting me. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Accountable CFO and uh, Simple uh, Tax Compliant? Sure. So Accountable CFO, I actually started when I was working full time at a bank, JP Morgan, and um, I needed some extra money for something. So I started part time, like most people start their business part time, doing it on nights and weekends and trying to raise my kid and uh, I was successful with the first one who referred me to my second client and all of a sudden I had a bunch of new clients and I was like oh well I guess I can make a business out of this and so I opened the doors about six years ago I can't believe it's been six years or almost six years but it's been a great ride um Basically, though, what we do is accounting for small businesses, um, but we add a little twist. Uh, unlike most accountants and accounting firms, you talk to them once a year. With me, you talk to me monthly. You get good advice all the time. Um, we don't wait until the end of the year. We do it throughout the year so that you're not at the end of the year going, oh, no, I owe X amount of money. No, we don't want that to happen. So... Yeah, you want, last thing you want to do is be in a panic at the at the end of the year. So Simply Tax Compliant is more of a technology that allows smaller businesses who aren't quite ready for an accountant um, to keep track of all their compliance because every state is different. Sales tax is getting more complicated. Permits for cities and states have gone up, especially for like home service businesses like plumbers. And so we kind of built a a system that you can log in, put your information, and we'll send you reminders. And it's nominal, and we'll tell you how, what forms you need to fill out, how to fill them out, um, what government agency you need to file them with, and then of course, if you need to, if you need help, you can always give us a call. How did you come up with that idea? Well, uh, as you know, most accountants, we get phone calls from people all the time. How do I do this? What do I do? How do I do this? Um, and I can't answer everybody. If I did it, it would be literally all my time spent. So I wanted a way for smaller businesses who aren't just quite ready yet to get their questions answered and be able to feel like I'm confident because... <clears throat> People don't like to mess around with the IRS and the, the governments, you know, nobody wants that notice that says, oh my God, I owe $40,000. And, and so we wanted to be able to give uh, a way in between, in between that until you're ready to really go, go and get an accountant, which of course, as soon as you can go get an accountant, even if it's not me. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what, at what point do you think it's makes sense for somebody to make that leap? Well, I mean, if it was up to me the day your doors open, I would have you in my office and we would work on it. But I realized that starting a business is an expensive endeavor and so you can't always do it. So I suggest at least taking a basic bookkeeping class so that you can keep your books in, in an orderly fashion and you know what you need to do so that at the end of the year, it's not such a huge deal. Um, but really, if you can afford, I mean, there's some really cheap options just for basic bookkeeping nowadays. I know QuickBooks offers a live bookkeeper. They're so-so on that. But <laughs> there's a couple of places I recommend, like Bench.co is like $100 a month if you're a service-based business. Um, Acuity.co is another one that does it really cheap. But as soon as you have maybe an extra $100 a month, get someone in there that can that can make your stuff a little bit better sure so speaking of starting a business um sure. how should how should um you know if i'm looking to start a, a retail shop how should i structure 
that business? Should I just create an LLC or? So <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand that LLCs and sole props and all of those kind of things are kind of kit together. So if you're going to open a brick and mortar shop in your state, you should probably start with an LLC and an LLC will protect your personal assets. So if you're married and you own a house and someone comes into your shop and they fall down and break a hip and decide to sue you, it protects your home and your mortgage and your wife's income or your spouse's income. So it helps with that, right? But if you can't, and most states keep it pretty cheap. However, when you open up an LLC, it's only to your state. And what you're going to do then is go to the um, IRS and fill out an EIN, which is your employer identification number. And it's going to ask you, are you a sole prop or are you an S corp? I suggest you pick, if you're a new business and you're not making any money yet, pick the S corp, or I'm sorry, don't pick the S corp, pick the sole proprietorship because it'll be cheaper for you. Compliance on an S corp is, is expensive, right? You have to hire an accountant. You're not going to have any, you know, it's going to cost you money at least 500 to fill that out not including your individual taxes. Plus, you're probably not in a place where you can pay yourself on a regular basis. And with an S Corp, you have to give yourself a reasonable salary. And there are definitely rules that say what's reasonable or not. And then ask yourself, have I used all my options to save money and reduce my taxes on my LLC before I switch over to an S Corp? And things like, have I put money away for retirement with a 401k or um, what they call a solo 401k um, or a if you haven't done that yet, you're not really ready for an S Corp because you want to have your money start working for you. And there are ways to reduce your taxes without going into an S Corp status. I know sometimes internet gurus like, oh, go for the S Corp and you'll save all this money. Maybe, but most likely if your business is only making a little bit of money right now, you need time to build that up and time to make sure that your savings and your spouse's savings are al aligned before you switch over to S Corp. And that's the other thing. You can always switch to S Corp later on. Always. It's not like you're um, pigeonholed into that one thing. <laughs> did that Did that answer your question? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of uh, action-packed information in there. Um, <laughs> so speaking, speaking of tax savings, you know, what, what do you think are some things and you know, obviously know this, but what are some things that businesses overlook when it comes to their taxes and in ways that they should, should and could be saving? So a lot of times they don't realize that as an LLC sole prop, um, you can take things off like your cell phone, your internet, if you have a home office, if. Um, even if you have a physical place that you work, you can also have a home office as well. And, and a lot of people don't recognize that or they don't realize they can or they're worried that the IRS is going to, you know, audit them for it. Um, nowadays, it's very normal to have two offices, you know, a local place and then... Um, and if you're doing administration at home, like your bookkeeping or, or invoicing or billing, that's a home office right there, you know. Um, the other thing is IRAs, 401ks, people don't use them. And I'm telling you, they're the best for reducing your income um, and still keeping that money. Not just reducing that income by spending it, but by saving it and having that money available to you later on. Because you will hopefully want to retire one day. <laughs> Hopefully, that's the end goal for most people. Right. <laughs> um, so you see, I mean, you mentioned it a few times, but IRS, right? It's like a, a naughty word to say to <laughs> any business owner. But, you know, with the new uh, act that President Biden signed in the, into, uh, in the law with implementing 87,000 new agents, 
how do you think that's going to affect, you know, businesses and, and even personal tax situations too? Okay. So, so a lot of times, um, first of all, it's a five-year plan. They, they can't just hire 87,000 people. First of all, you need qualified people. So um, it's a five-year plan, but it's also not just agents. And I know they've been stressing this, but it's also to upgrade their technology, which I think we all know is woefully out of date. Woefully. I mean, it, it, you can't even get them to answer your phone. They're like a million tax returns late on everything. Um, they really only audit like less than 3% of, of companies because they just don't have the people. And then you also have to think, well, it really boils down to record keeping, right? Which is why I stress it so much. Please keep good records. Keep good, keep those receipts, whether you like it or not, keep them because you will need them. And um, though it may increase the amount, it's still not gonna be a focus of tiny or micro businesses. It's gonna probably focus on medium-sized businesses. And it's it'll go from maybe 3% to 5% is still, you know, but if they could beef up their customer service just by adding a good customer service or better technology so that you can actually do a lot of stuff that you should be able to do online, make their IRS webpage readable for the average person, I would consider that a benefit to, to what they do. Um, and I think you'll see more of that as well. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress about it, especially if you're keeping good records and, and, you know, but again, you know, reach out to somebody if you need help. Um, twice a year, me and my team open it up for veterans, um, May and November, where you can call us for an hour and just talk to us about your financials and we'll have, we'll be happy to help you. That's so awesome. look for programs like that. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great resource. So, you know, what are, what are some ways that, and strategies that businesses can track compliance and expenses for their, for their business? So of course, you know, a lot of people don't even like to spend money on QuickBooks and QuickBooks can be very complicated for the average person. So one of the things that I suggest if you're a small service-based business and you don't really have inventory and employees is you can use a program called YNAB or you need a budget. And it actually is, is $85 a year. It feeds from your business checking account which by the way, you should always have those separate <laughs> or your credit card. And you can actually plan out where your money is. Now it doesn't include receipt management. So what I normally do is I try and get digital copies of all my receipts and I organize them there. Um, and then if I can't do that, I of course scan them in and I just keep them by the month. You know, I, I'm, I'm a service-based business, so it's pretty easy. When you have inventory, that's going to be more complicated, but if you just want to use Excel or Google, you can buy small programs that allow you to track that inventory in there simply, and they cost maybe 30 or $40, and you can do that if you have like an online store. Um, if you have a brick and mortar store with like a big inventory, you are going to probably want to buy a system that manages that along with a, a POS or a point of sale with like your cash register type stuff. And you want something that can control your inventory. Um, that is going to be the most important thing for you right there. And then the other thing I've noticed is that most small businesses don't understand their balance sheet or the equity section. So there are a couple of really good YouTube videos that explain that and how to actually uh, keep track of that. And it's really important to do that, especially when you have larger assets like a building or vehicles or that type of thing. So until you're ready to go to like a more accounting software type thing. Sure. I mean, that's, when, when you add in, I guess when the when the businesses start to scale too, you're adding employees as well. So can you talk about what that process is like when you're bringing employees on and payroll and all those sorts of things? 
So we're actually writing a new series for Accountable on hiring new employees because it's a complicated business. Um, not only the best thing to do is get a payroll provider. I always recommend Gusto. They're really good. They're they're relatively inexpensive, you know, any payroll, but there is a lot of paperwork involved at your state and federal level that you want to make sure to keep track of. So, so you want to make sure to do your, you know, monthly payroll, you have to withdraw and remit, you know, all those fun, I, um, Medicare and Medicaid and all those fun taxes. And you do not want to, as well as unemployment, SUDA and FUDA, which is federal unemployment and state unemployment. And you do not want to be late on those. I'm going to stress <laughs> that the, the penalties on that are terrible. So. And, and then the other thing is if you hire contractors, you have to, or really vendors, any vendors that are an LLC that are not a corporation, you're going to have to remit what we call the 1099 NEC. And you have to do that. So before anyone does business with me, I get that W9 and I make sure that's filled out and I won't pay them until I get that. And that usually stops that from happening. So you can get that, you know, sent off. And that's even true of if you hire an individual, not a company, but an individual, and you have to pay that. And the penalties for that are ridiculous. I mean, they're really, really bad. So, <laughs> so if you need some help figuring out, if you go to my blog, there is a uh, an article on making sure your 1099s are correct and that you get them out on time and what to do when people like refuse to give you your social security number or refuse to give you that kind of information, what you can do so that you don't get penalized for it. Sure. Do you want... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. I, I don't want to be penalized. You know, the last. Yeah. Time... No, who does? <laughs> part of the tax man. He's already taken enough. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so what are, what are some things that, you know, we haven't covered that small businesses should really be aware of and look out, you know, from a tax perspective or an accounting perspective that you think is relevant. Okay. So <clears throat> when you're looking at deductions, it's not always a one for one. So when I say that, if you're doing meals and entertainment, like you take a client out to dinner, um, you have to have specific things recorded on the receipt, like who you had it with, what you discussed, uh, the day and time, uh, was there alcohol involved, all this kind of stuff before you can deduct it. And so receipt management and making sure that you know exactly what you need, it's not just, you know, the Ikea receipt or, or the, um, I bought some inventory. You want to make sure that those receipts are, are, you have them and that they're right in order to make that deduction. And also remember that the deduction is about your business. So if you're a brick and mortar store and you buy a uniform, it's deductible. But if you buy new clothes, it's not because that's for personal use, right? And the same thing with their vehicles. You know, if you don't have a private vehicle um, at home uh, and you buy a vehicle for your business, the IRS will disallow that because you don't have another vehicle. Most likely that's a personal use vehicle that you use sometimes for business. So you want to make sure that you keep that stuff correct. And so when you buy things, you'll make sure that's correct. Yeah, so, absolutely. Good record keeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and you brought up meals and entertainment, but I know that that rule has changed, you know, on a almost like on a yearly basis, right? Because like, like 100%, but in pat, years past, you've only been able to duck like 50, right? 50%. So originally it was 100%, and then they pa uh, passed the tax jobs act and then reduced it to 50 percent and then congress mandated nope we're gonna let people do 100 percent now um tax laws change yearly in fact there's some new stuff coming out now on if you are an s corp you're gonna have extra paperwork to do that you're gonna have to calculate which is why it starts getting more and more expensive every year 
<laughs> so so uh, accountants can keep you up on that. And that's why it starts getting more important. If nothing else, and you can't afford anything else, if you can find someone to just do your taxes, even that will be better for you. Just make sure they have errors and omissions insurance in case they make a mistake because it happens to the best of us. But that way, if we make a mistake, it's covered by my insurance. And then we, of course, reimburse our clients for, for that penalty or whatever happened. Or we can file an amendment or whatever. But uh, just make sure that happens. And if nothing else, you should definitely have someone. And as wonderful as TurboTax is... <laughs> Having someone, you know, you can pick up the phone and actually have a conversation with is the best thing that will happen. I mean, it'll it'll clarify it. It'll make you less afraid to, you know, talk to someone who's knowledgeable that can help you. Sure. Absolutely. So for you, you know, I know that you're in Texas right now, but mm -hmm. what's sort of your service area? Do you take on clients from anywhere? I can take on national. Um, I can take on national. I can work out of any state with two exceptions, and that's New York and California, um, only because they have very complicated. So um, probably what we'll do next year is hire someone that has specific knowledge to California and New York so we can take on those clients because their stuff is very complicated. <laughs> those those oh, states. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much any other state we can handle and we'll be more than happy to take a look at it and um i have a great staff who's always always willing to go the extra mile they're all veterans so um i think that helps us with customer service because you know <laughs> here to serve that's right <laughs> yep. so what, what's the what's the best way for uh somebody to get in touch with you andrea and, and you know to have that conversation <clears throat> Absolutely. You can go to my website, accountablecfo.com, and schedule an appointment. We do 30-minute consultations. I'll give you a call. You, you, you know, We'll talk about your situation and what you need help with, and we'll see if we can work together. And if... You know, like I said, in May and November, we'll open it up to veterans and we're more than happy to do personal taxes and all that fun stuff. And and if it just needs some help with personal finance, that's why we're here. Awesome. We'll put all those links in the description below for you as well. Excellent. So. Thank you. Appreciate you sharing more about your business. This has been My fun. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, you may want to check out this episode here, or you can view this one right here. And if you want to support and patronize veteran and military spouse-owned businesses, make sure to check out their links in the description below. Our goal is to keep the military community connected, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video on VetBiz TV.